given that y is inversely proportional to x and that y is 4 when x is 3, find an expression for y in terms of x. Now, when you see inversely proportional, okay, proportional means that in relationships, as one grows, the other grows in a certain way as well. But when it's inversely, as one increases, the other decreases, okay? That's the kind of re relationship it's got. Okay, so we need to write then a proportional symbol, but because, as I said, one increases, the other decreases, we write it as one over, right? And it's inversely proportional to x, okay? So that's what we've got there. Remember, we can't deal with this as it is, so we, we put an equal sign in, right? We showed it equal, but we've got to bring this constant in, right? Constant of proportionality, or we call it k, and then we times that then by the 1 over x, so, so we can do k times 1 over x, or just k over x. And then it gives us values to work out k. Okay, it's important you do that. So y is 4, x is 3. So what you can do then is, you've got this situation, take the 3 up. So you end up having k is equal to 12. Okay? And, but don't forget, I almost forgot then, you need to then write your answer then out with k inputted. Okay? So there's my solution. Use the expression you found in A to complete the following table. Now, um, you've got this now. X is 0 0.25. Okay, so we can just sub that in. Okay. X is 0 0.25. So put that in there and we've got to work this out. So what we've got to do now is without the calculator, we need to do 12 divided by 0 0.25. Okay. Now, basically, if you think about it, it's a quarter, isn't it? So we need to see how many quarters are in 12. Okay, so you might be able to work that out, how many quarters in 12. I mean, you know how many quarters there are in, in 1? There's 4, isn't there? So then how many are going to be in 12? The other way of doing it, right, is with fractions like this, with a decimal, you can get rid of the decimal by scaling it up. So maybe you times that by 4, yeah? So you get to 1. So you'd effectively say how many quarters there are in, in, in 1, aren't you, here, by times in by 4. Okay, but of course, if you times the bottom by 4 to, to get that to 1, right, Scaling it up, you have to scale the top up as well, times that by 4. So you get 48. So 48 over 1 is your answer. Okay? Then the situation here where they say y is... Um, oh, I've got to write it there, sorry. 48. I don't know why I've written it there. Then they, they give you the situation where y is 1 fifth. So we put 1 fifth in there. Equals 12 over x. So you've got this now, y is 1 fifth. Now what I'm going to do here is... Okay? Um, we want to work out x, so what I can do is, I could flip x here, couldn't I? I could write that as x over 12, okay, you could flip it, but you've got to make sure you flip this side as well, to get 5 over 1, okay, so you're allowed to flip that as long as you flip both sides, and then, of course, because, you, you know, that's just 5, isn't it, here, yeah? but because you divide in by 12 here, take the 12 over 1 times, so you get x, so x will be 60, okay, 